Thank you for staying with us this morning. After about eight months into the ASU strike, as you saw, of course, we are talking about the strike. ASU gave a directive for all its members to resume work, immediately bringing an end to the strike, which began on the 10th of February 2022. Let me also note, the strike ended October 14, 2022. So if you want to calculate, it's exact. Now, the decision, of course, was announced after a meeting of the committee uh, comprising of chairmen of its state chapters, national executive members, and all of that. But um, one of the things that ASU was asking for, of course, is for money to be pumped into the university system. And of course, speaking after the presentation, presenting the 2023 budget uh, before the National Assembly, uh, government is said, the president said, government is concerned about the welfare of lecturers and has allocated 470 billion naira in the 2023 budget for the revitalization and salary enhancement of tertiary schools in Nigeria. Now, the question remains exactly how will this and a number of other things that ASU has raised, how will these issues be addressed? Those are things to give us, giving us concern this morning as we have a conversation with uh, Mr. Olade Ndiariyo with us in here in the studio, who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. We're hoping to have uh, one other person join us this morning. I hope, uh, okay, Mr. Okwe Ochinwanta Okpala. I hope I didn't murder the name. He's an accountant. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me begin with you, Mr. Ario. As the strike has come and gone, and it's just one of those other times that we talk about strikes and, you know, they, re, they go back to the classrooms and all of that. In fact, uh, some time ago, we were educated that there's a difference within suspending the strike and calling off the strike. That's right. As we said, they have suspended the strike. Even though all of the issues raised have not been su su sufficiently Address. and satisfactorily addressed. What do you see happening? Well, I like your choice of words. They were very direct and specific. Two things that have bothered me since February. One event that happened before my birthday, one after my birthday. Also, strike started 14th. My birthday was 21st. The Russian-Ukraine crisis started 24th. So simultaneously, I was aging, and those <laughs> events too were aging. And I was bothered, why? Because they ought to have ended. Just like I was um, on air yesterday with Ladi, looking at the Russian-Ukraine crisis, I was like, when would this thing end? So when they said the ASU was going to suspend the strike, I look forward to that crisis also coming down. Now, get back to the studio. The reality is this. Over the years, what we have seen is that the end of a strike is the beginning of another strike. What do I mean? You just said it now that all the issues that were raised were not satisfactorily addressed, meaning they still have gray areas, you know, with which they can still go to war with the government. One thing that came to my mind, and uh, wherever he may be today, God bless his soul, Professor Jalila Motola, former VC of the University of Lagos. When he got to the University of Lagos, he brought in so much innovation, especially in the area of fund generation, okay? Such so that I can remember some of the key elements. Parking was earning income. You go to park in some place, you go to pay. People are paying. Then they created chances for students' work experience. They were schooling, yet they had places to work within the campus system. And then they were able to finance their education. And that helped to a large extent. But what bothers me here is that the problems we are having in education didn't start today. Over the years, we've always been underfunding education. If you, use the, you can use the UN, uh, UNESCO benchmark, okay? 
We've always fallen short. But the point is, two elements are responsible for this. One is corruption. The second is, when people say in Finland, for instance, that education is free, they fail to add that you are heavily taxed in Finland, which makes it possible for government to fund education. When you say corruption is a reason in Nigeria, right. on whose part? I'll give you an example. Before the present man at JAMP, annually, government was giving JAMP funds to organize exams into universities, right? When this man came, for the first time, he returned money to JAMP. It's at a point now... He returned money to the so, federal... Sorry, to, to federal government. Okay. It's at a point now where he's not asking for any money. What changed? Management. What changed? Knowledge. What changed? Skill. He brought fresh thinking to bear on jump operation. The same way, if people can really sit back, and it's very painful because our university system was created to grow thinkers, mm. to grow minds that will come up with ideas, that will grow the nation, okay. studies that will you know, turn the nation around. But when they cannot sit and then think through a similar perennial problem, I mean, cause for, for worry. Okay. Mr. Okwala, um, your opening comments on this as well. Um, Asu says, we're back in classes, but we're not completely satisfied. What do you see? Well, um, I think we're all aware that Asu has been forced to call up, well, call up their strike, but to suspend their strike because because of two things. One, the mediation by the speaker and his team, and then by the court judgment that was um, the judgment that of the appeal court that said, look, before you proceed further in hearing your case, first, first go, go to class. However, um, it's obvious that uh, all is not, is almost like a, 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 a battle that has been suspended. It can be it can be restarted, but any, that is not in the interest of anybody. I don't think it's in the interest of the lecturers. It's not in the interest of the parents. It's not in the interest of the students. So I think our way, many Nigerians, should urge the government to at least have a negotiation, negotiate with, uh, negotiate with us, and then arrive at, a, uh, at something that is acceptable to both parties. Mm -hmm. Using the court or forcing them to go to class through blackmail means that well, the, 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 the issue may be restarted, and when it is restarted, it's not in the interest of anybody. So mm. as it is now, I don't think, um, yes, we, we, we hear as a sign of relief. As I'm a parent, and then um, three of my young children are undergraduates in the same, my same university where I teach. I'm also a lecturer, and, um, mm. and so I am um, on both sides. I'm, I'm losing from both ends, both as a parent and as a lecturer who is uh, an accountant. So. I think that government, all women, women in Nigerians, should persuade government to not just uh, do it because force the lecturers only through, through court, but also negotiate, look at the issues, and then have an agreement as to what can be done and what cannot be done. Hmm. Well, uh, Mr. Pala, when I heard courts, it sounds in my ears that you are saying that if government could go to court to compel ASU to return to the classrooms. ASU can also go to court to get an order to compel governments to pay whatever it is that they are owing. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'll, we also know that uh, you can compel, uh, even when government gives an order, that uh, even, even when court gives an order that government doesn't like, government will not obey it. It will drag its feet. It has happened before, in fact, even in the case of uh, uh, Carlo that has been asked to be released by the appeal court. They are still there. I mean, government finds the excuse not to obey. So, but because government has the executive power, the crazy with, under his control, so he can always say, look, God said this, you must do it. But when God says that government will do it, and the government doesn't do it, nobody else has the um, capacity forces to force government to do what God says. Yeah, even though government responded, even though government responded to that one uh, by saying, uh, just a second, Mr. Kuala, 
Even though government responded by saying, well, he's been discharged, not acquitted. Well, that's not the subject of our conversation right now. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. You know, when there is a will, when there is a will, there is a will. And when, okay. there are, when you don't have the will, okay, so you can that, make a that, thousand excuses. That's the point that you're making. When there is a will, there is a will. Do you see the, a will on, part, on the part of government now? that ASU has done what government wants, they've returned to school. ASU's demands still need to be met. What do you see happening? We, you know, I, I, I quote my colleague often when, they, when he says, look, you know what someone will do by what the person has done before. So uh, it, there are those who, who believe that, look, it is in the habit of government to not obey court orders, just as you heard Mr. Yeah. Opala also say. It, it's also been a reason why a, a huge level of trust deficiency has besieged government and the governed, so to speak. So what do you need, think government needs to do or as we need to do now so that we do not return to this time of strikes? We've been talking about the autonomy of universities. The question is how autonomous have they become over the years? This is the only country I can remember where primary school fees, okay, are more than tuition fees in the universities. Let me say it again. We pay more for private primary school, okay, education in Nigeria than those in the universities they pay, as in government universities. The question I want to ask you, why is it like that? I told you earlier on, I mentioned the issue of corruption and underfunding that has plagued I'm a little confused education. with what you have just said now, Mr. Ario. <laughs> so, um, you're saying that people should pay more in the universities. They have to. Let me tell you. But then don't in, also in forget, country, uh, example, don't forget that there was an attempt by the Lagos State government to raise the fees at Lasso. It was seriously resisted, resisted by the yeah. people. You must understand that when I say they should pay more, um, I'm not looking at it at that percentage, okay? There must be a percentage rate of increase. The incremental rate may be progressive over time, okay? You just can't come from, say, from 50,000 Naira to 500,000 Naira because the economy is not friendly. We all know everybody is broke and money is very hard to come by. But the reality confronting us now is the fact that, number one, government earnings has depleted now. We are owing so much. We are surviving on borrowed times or borrowed funds. So it would be wishful thinking to, th you know, to now see government moving into that. But if they can expand tax net and ensure that more people pay tax in Nigeria, as we are today, except for those who are regular you know, salary earners, the other sector, they rarely pay taxes. But do you think this is a position that ASU will be sympathetic to? They have waited since 2001. The reality is whether they want to be sympathetic or not, you can force a horse to the river, but you cannot force that horse to drink water. Part of the things that ASU has also brought forward in the various conversations we've had with them is, look, if you say you don't have money, or you have money for some other things. You have money for certain emergencies. I, you have money for, for 100 million naira each individual paying buying, for buying presidential forms, funds. Yeah. And also, government had money buying cars for another country. Exactly. And with you, I mean, I'm with them on that score. But the truth is, the mindset or the body language of the present government does not seem to favor education to a reasonable extent. We've, we've had... Um, is that something crossroads. that you would say is peculiar to this government or even successive governments over it's the years? It's not peculiar to this government, but this government has made a show of it on so many fronts, which makes it a lot more painful. Example. We just talk about the vehicles bought for Nigeria Republic, okay? The train construct, being constructed from Nigeria to Nigeria Republic. Those are those, not, it's not they, an, it's they, not an essential. They, well, they pointed to economic realities. The question that. is, what is the quantum of trade between here and Niger, okay, that warranted anybody signing off such a mongoose fund for the train? 
We do more with Benin Republic here than Niger. Those are not decisions made on merits, and I, I'm against it. So, and then, of course, the cost of governance is being hammered over time. But the, the incoming government will tell you we will do better. But when they get in, they now do worse. We've talked of nationalization of MDAs. There was a panel by Rosoye that was set up, and they came up with so much report and all of that. At the end of the day, are we any better for it? Those things have not been affected. We must begin to look into areas where funds can be saved. When you see money moving around recklessly, they endanger corruption. And you can imagine so much um, um, crisis came into the system that gave our gatekeeper, our general, the, the, the latitude to have misappropriated over a hundred billion naira. Who does that? That is what we were told. There could be more elsewhere. Okay. Well, Mr. Kwala, uh, there, there is also that position that, I mean, you just heard him now say that it seems that government is not so much concerned about education in the country. There are those who point to look, it's to the fact that, look, this isn't just starting now, pointing as far back as 30, 40 years ago, where successive ASU strikes have pointed to the fact that we have lost so many, uh, you know, lives and brains and resources to ASU strikes and all of that. And as you've heard Mr. Uh, Ario here say, as far as he's concerned, government isn't interested in developing the education sector. What is your take? What exactly? Perhaps people don't even understand what lecturers are going through in the universities, consequence upon which we heard the Minister of Labor say, not maybe about a year or two ago, that our graduates are not employable. Well, um, I've been a lecturer in the University of Lagos for at least 17 years. So I, I, and anybody who tells you, in spite, actually, in spite of the poor provision of, of all facilities, our, our products, the products of Nigerian universities, when they go abroad, they yeah, excel. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, some of them, they, so it's not true that there is poor, the, 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 the quality of our students are poor. Yes, because of the numbers, you see that there is a, 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 a lot of um, difference between the best students and the worst students. There's a big gap. And that is because in a class that may take, um, that should take few people, about 150 people will be there. So, I mean, those who get what the, te what the teachers are doing, they do very well. But those who are not able to sit in front, sometimes you will wonder whether I'm in the US. That's what most of us all the university system have seen. However, I mean, I agree completely with Mr. Ario uh, that the government is not serious about education. And they are more interested in awarding universities that constituency projects to, their, to, to, to politicians and then making appointments when they create universities. That's what they are more interested in than okay. actually seeing that there is quality teaching and learning, knowledge sharing in their educational institutions. Yes, you will say, I, but I, in the area, they will say, oh, there is no money. But there is no money that has not stopped them, including this government, from creating new uh, tertiary institutions. Either because, I mean, to put it in his own uh, politician's background, you know, any politician, either a minister or even the president, they will go and create one university or one higher institution in your local, in your local, in your constituency. They are working in universities as constituency projects. And then, and they will say they have no money to fund the ones that are already existing. Is it not contradictory? So I think, like I said before, when there is a will, there is a way. When they want to go abroad, for to treat their, their uh, for their treatment, they can afford to go with hundred eggs, pay their extra coat for hundred days, pay the hotel bill and pack the presidential debt. But when it comes to funding education, I can tell you that one visit to London to treat the president costs more than uh, uh, probably it will take to revitalize one, one university and make it world class. But when it comes to that, when uh, when they have a little issue, they can provide money. They can treat themselves. When they can award themselves, they can fly first class. They can do everything. They don't show that there is, there, uh, there is um, 
there is need for people to spend. In fact, when you look at our officials, you can't say there is no money because they are spending money. They are buying new jeeps. They are, and even when, if, when they build, when they are say they are constructing, they are doing projects. Project that you know from the with the eye of our accountant, which I am, that cannot cost more than hundred million naira. They will put one billion naira there. And then, so waste, corruption, and insincerity is why our education is where it is now. Now, I'm coming to lecturers. I'm a lecturer. And I can tell you, the highest paid professor in university doesn't go home with less than, with more than 416,000 in, in a month. And that, and from there, you pay for your own uh, conference, you pay for your own research. So, and when you do this, what is happening? The young ones are beginning to, either they, 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 they come in and they will not be committed to that profession. I mean, they are looking outside, they are making money outside, or they are thinking of a way of living the entire the system. And if it continues, like I said in another platform, if it continues, the same way they have um, feminized primary, public primary education and uh, public secondary education, they will feminize university education. Only women and those who think that are breadwinners will no longer go there. If you go to public secondary school now, you will hardly see a man teaching there. Even when you go to public uh, primary school, you hardly see a man teaching there. He said, oh, okay, go and go there. Uh, go and be doing something so that we uh, uh, go and be doing. It's not something that is meant to help you pick your bills. It's just to keep you busy somehow. And that is what that's where they're driving the tertiary education, especially lecturing in the university. Because nobody, and a university lecturer with his PhD collecting less than 200,000 and has to publish and needs to pay for his publications, needs to go for conference and pay with his own money. If, if he has to do that, <laughs> there must be somewhere else he's making money for. He cannot even pay for one child. He can't, he can't even train two, two, two children in secondary school in Nigeria of today. There are a lot more concerns than we're even aware of right now, especially in the university system. Well, Mr. Rio, uh, perhaps one of the reasons that people don't even understand the issues we are dealing with is because uh, those who are not in the university system may not really appreciate the issues that ASU is talking about, especially when they talk about revitalization of the university system. Uh, but then, that's not to say that a sizable number of people in government today didn't go through the same systems. So, in actualizing ASU's demands, what should be the consideration? I mean, you've raised a vital you know, issue in the fact that government is broke. We are borrowing even to, we are borrowing to service our borrowings. So, we, we, have, we are in a dire street, so to speak. So, that's on the one hand. But on the other hand, government has promised 470 billion naira that it does not have. Oh, and they and don't they, have, right? I mean, clearly, I mean, we have to borrow. Okay. Uh, that's that's okay. what we're talking about here now. So what are the considerations ASU needs to, what are the concessions that you would consider? Expect ASU to offer. That, that ASU mm. would, you know, put into consideration that, that can, in the light of, of demanding. Uh, right, yes. Um, you see, you are owing me, right? Or you have an obligation to me, which you have not delivered. Mm. And you are telling me to bear with you. Whereas your lifestyle is reflecting the opposite position. You were there on a Saturday, spraying money at a party, yet you were telling me you could not pay me. So the government must lead, and, and I mean genuinely now, in reflecting the situation in which we are by blocking several loopholes that guarantee waste. We have a lot of waste pipes through which good money you know, goes bad to nothing. Number two, we, we, we and I know that the cost of contracts in Nigeria, the cost of getting things done, they are outrageous. You cannot compare them with what goes on elsewhere. And all of these things combined together, including our inability over the years to stabilize our power system, have not helped us in any manner to create an environment that would enable growth and development, especially in the manufacturing sectors. And then this will also lead to increased taxes and then expand employment uh, um, zones. So, ASU does have to understand the fact that 
the times are difficult, the times are hard. I would rather they, they push for autonomy. Let each university stand on its own. Okay? Let them be allowed to charge what they consider appropriate fees. Then they can pay appropriate salaries. It's a shame that the highest paid professor in Nigeria University today is on less than 450,000 naira. Whereas the same person elsewhere we earn a lot more. Let me tell you, because of my engagement with the media, and I was like, okay, let me go and chase certificates in mass communication. I applied to start with a PGD, okay? The person talking to me said, are you sure you want to go through this? And I was like, why? Because and it's, an, it's an annual ritual that there'll be a strike. I remember listening to General Bu I mean, President Buhari during the regime of uh, Jonathan, saying that the government wasn't doing that, you know, that they should have had conversation with the ASU and that no government that is what is told should allow a strike in the education system, university for that matter, to linger for so long. Well, here we are, the same person, now the president, and allowed eight good months. Now tell me, we may look at it laterally, eight months, but what that means in the real sense is that eight months in the life of every student in that system has been wasted. They came back now, some are saying they are going to start examination. What are you going to be examining? What you didn't teach them or what? So it's no longer the usual thinking. They have to go back, okay? Some people say they should go and think outside the box. But for me, they have to exhaust the content in the box first. I'm beginning to understand that they must fight for their autonomy. Then let the university be run. It's not, they can't be running, they can't be managing like they're managing the civil service. They are not civil servants, okay? It's a specialized industry on its own. The same way you don't pay people in aeronautics or rockets, okay? The way you pay other people. They have to be specially positioned. Mm. They must get this thing together and then let the individual VC know that it's an MD in a way, okay? And he must make sure where he precise things work. But you know, on that, on that issue that you just raised now of the university systems being autonomous yeah. and the VCs, perhaps we'll, 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 we'll talk to Mr. Okwala about that as well, and the VCs being autonomous and the rest of that. You know, the, I have asked my, myself a question. I am the managing director, okay? No, let me say I'm the general manager of a group of banks. Now, my staff wants to strike. They are writing letters to the group MD in Abuja. I am in Delta State, and I am the general manager of my branch. My staff wants to go on strike. They are writing to the group MD that the group MD should pay their salaries. I've had a problem with that because that's the picture in my head about ASU. Yeah, that's, that's why it's not working. The Minister of Education is just playing big for nothing. They have no business getting involved. They have no business getting involved. The box will stop at the table of the VC. They should be dealing directly with the presidency. Okay, let me, let me speak with uh, Mr. Opala on that. There are those who ask that question. Why are the, the university systems themselves not autonomous? You know, the VCs, the president, you know, recently called the VCs and invited him to, to, them to a meeting and said, make sure the systems work under you. Yeah. But then here we are now, with, we, whenever ASU has issues, they speak to the VCs. Exactly. Whenever, you know, ASU has a pro problem with the university system, they write to the, the minister ministry. and not the VCs. Oh. What, is, what is it that people don't understand about that? Because you discuss the person who has power to change things. Is that to say that the VCs don't have the power? Of course they don't. A, a VC cannot approve anything more than two million now. Oh. They cannot without, <laughs> without going to council. And they, even the council cannot approve certain things without going to the, to, 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 to the federal government. So if the federal government is facing who determines your pay, and government organizes it to be so, it hmm. was organized in such a way that, and let me tell you, one thing our politicians like is control without responsibility. They want to exercise authority without responsibility. I want to tell you something else. In to, today, on, for every flimsy excuse, the House of Reps, the Senate, NUC, 
Ministry of Education, we summon VC and we go there and sit for days, not facing the work he's supposed to. VCs and deep VCs. Because sometimes come with your boss to National Assembly. You come and maybe <laughs> because they are the ones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, sometimes for something as easy as an admission. So what I'm telling you is that the, our politicians want control, they want to exercise authority without meeting responsibilities. They believe they don't have any responsibility, but they will accumulate authority and authority. That's why we concentrate powers where, where it is. So if they are talking about autonomy, I fully subscribe to it. I mean, they are, they are, the university should have autonomy and to be able to function. Mm. So the issues can be dealt with as quickly as they come. But our politicians are not only authoritative, they, are don't, they are also lazy. Okay. This issue of strike now, what we're talking about, it started, they, it took almost four months before the first meeting meeting was held. Well, it's an endless conversation. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so well, uh, most certainly, you know, something that we have to deal with. Uh, discuss over and over again uh, to get some closure. We have to thank you at this point. Uh, Okwe Okwala is an accountant and as you have heard him say, a lecturer. Thank you so much. Uh, you're, I just said it. you're a lecturer as well. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, As well as uh, Mr. Aladdin Diario who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much. Thank for you for having me. Morning. Okay. You have heard them mention politicians. There are people you employ to work for you. What do you need to know as you employ another set next year? That's up. She said when we return from here.